The ability to attack from the air and engage in aerial combat is the basic function of the Royal New Zealand Air Force's strike wing. It is the most flexible option available for rapid, sharp responses to challenges by sea, on land or in the air. The McDonnell Douglas A4K Skyhawk is the Royal New Zealand Air Force's frontline offensive and defensive aircraft in the attack combat role. They are flown by 75 Squadron, based at Ohakia. A versatile multi-purpose aircraft, the Skyhawk can operate on the threshold of the sound barrier in the varied profiles of contemporary aerial warfare. Close support of ground troops, interdiction, counter-air and anti-shipping operations. At times, it assists in the aerial surveillance of New Zealand's 200 nautical mile exclusive economic zone and sometimes provides extra eyes for the search and rescue organisation. Carrying a destructive payload of 8,200 pounds, this rugged aerial weapon system can deliver rockets, bombs, cannon fire and missiles, depending on the aircraft's particular mission. To use this firepower with deadly precision, Skyhawk pilots serve an exacting apprenticeship within the service. Some starting their Air Force careers studying in arts or science at Canterbury University with military training during the term vacations. These are the new breed of the few. Young men who master the theories of life before mastering the theory and practice of flight. Others join the general duties or flying branch of the Air Force straight from secondary school. Both groups get a truly professional start to a career in military aviation. It begins with 12 weeks of officer training at the Command Training School at RNZAF Base Wigram near Christchurch. Officer cadets successfully completing this first segment of training transfer to the pilot training squadron also located at Wigram. In the classroom, student pilots grapple with subjects as diverse as aerodynamics, meteorology and navigation. Then they cut their flying teeth on the simple, safe but highly manoeuvrable CT-4B air trainer. Over 30 weeks, students spend 130 hours in the air in this New Zealand developed and constructed training aircraft. The 210 horsepower six-cylinder Continental engine supplies power for a maximum speed of 150 knots. After learning all the basic flying skills, student pilots advance to instrument flying and aerobatics. The final 15 weeks of their advanced initial flying training is at Ohakia, where they convert to the BAC-167 Strikemaster, 
the Air Force's jet trainer. This high-performance jet training aircraft is powered by a single Rolls-Royce Viper 20 engine, developing 3,410 pounds of thrust. With a maximum speed of 450 knots, the Strike Master is armed with two 7.62 millimeter machine guns and an assortment of rockets and bombs of varying size. Because the training is intense, it's a constant struggle to keep up with the exercises, both on the ground and in the air. It is planned to ensure that those who survive it are well equipped to handle split-second decisions in operating today's and tomorrow's generations of warplanes. For the young pilots selected to specialize in the attack combat role of the RNZAF, it's just a few steps from the Strike Master to the Skyhawk. They're both based at Ohakia, but they're big steps. It means more training, more exercising, more briefings, and above all, more flying. It must become an absolute alliance of man and his machine. To understand all the implications of their chosen profession, pilots will study international politics, economics, man management, and military law, as well as tactics. There are physiological lessons to be learned too, as they undergo training in a decompression chamber at the Defence Environmental Medical Unit at Hobsonville. Here, Air Force medical staff monitor the effects of hypoxia, caused by lack of oxygen at high altitudes. And don't forget, when I tell you to turn your oxygen on, we want you to turn the regulator on first, and then put your mask on. All right, flight, if you can give them a piece of paper each. <coughs> and we'll just get you to write down that you're now in the decompression chamber. Okay, now just put your pens down, if you would, for a moment. Stretch your hands out in front of you. And we'll see if there's any tremble here. Now there's a bit of a tremble, see that? That's what we call the hypoxic twitch coming on. It's one of the early signs of uh, oxygen there. Right, I'll just put your hands down coordination test now the instructor number 18 to do a coordination test touch your nose and the instructor's finger to and fro quite quickly that's how his coordination slipped all right that'll do just carry on with the writing number 19 to do a coordination test with the instructor number 18 how are you feeling can you tell me how you're feeling put your oxygen on number 18 Right, flight sergeant, put his oxygen on. Just sit back and relax. Okay, you can go back on to oxygen number 19. Right, now the recovery is quite quick. So In the chamber, they also experience the physical shock of rapid decompression from 8,000 to 35,000 feet in just two seconds. Ready, switch on. Five. Three, two, one, fire. 35,000. Okay. For every man trained to function in the air, the RNZAF needs many more on the ground. Aeronautical engineers, avionics technicians, cooks, clerks, medics are all essential. The Skyhawk's engine needs regular inspection and servicing. The Pratt & Whitney J-52 turbojet is a complicated beast, delivering 9,300 pounds of thrust and producing 14,880 horsepower. It's made up of 5,979 individual parts. After every 1,500 hours flying, it is stripped down to the last nut and bolt. Each component is carefully checked and, if necessary, repaired or replaced before the engine is rebuilt to re-enter service. The squadron's own technical staff handle everyday servicing, but for major tasks, Ohakia's aircraft maintenance squadron takes over. 
its engineers have to be the best. The Skyhawk has only one engine, and if that fails, the aircraft has the gliding capability of a brick. Another most important function of the ground team is to maintain the Skyhawk's avionics. These include a navigation computer, radar altimeter, automatic flight control system, and terrain clearance radar, together with all the communications and direction finding equipment. This electronics package is a jungle of circuitry and requires highly skilled servicing. Damage to one fine wire or one loose connector could spell instant disaster for the aircraft and its pilot. It's the engineer's attention to detail that allows the pilot to fly with the complete confidence needed to meet the mental challenge of aerial combat. These same standards are maintained by RNZAF armourers, who are responsible for the preparation of the A4's payload of 8,200 pounds of rockets, bombs, cannon and missiles. The armourers also ensure that the pilot's ejection seat works, if it's ever needed. This ejection system even permits the pilot to make an emergency escape at zero altitude and zero speed if necessary. The technical staff responsible for the airworthiness and operational readiness of the squadron's aircraft are trained to a standard hard to equal in even the world's biggest air forces. To keep up with advancing technology and to improve tactical performance, 75 Squadron regularly hosts Allied aircraft. A United States F-15 climbs spectacularly from Ohakia's runway. Another supersonic visitor is the Royal Australian Air Force's F-111 Swing Wing Strike Aircraft, which exercises with New Zealand Skyhawks. A United States Marine Corps Hercules tanker links up with a pair of 75 Squadron A-4s for in-flight refuelling. New Zealand's Defence Forces regularly visit the South Pacific and Southeast Asia to maintain and strengthen bilateral relations with countries of strategic concern. Along with defence coordination, deployment within the region broadens the training experience and military skills of both the New Zealand and Allied Forces. With its servicing team and ground handling equipment transported by 40 Squadron Hercules, 75 Squadron deploys as a complete self-contained unit. At Ishwayudi Air Base in central Java, Indonesian Air Force officers are introduced to the Skyhawk by visiting New Zealand airmen. Regular exercises in the tropical environment of its allies are conducted under the five power defence arrangement and as an instrument of the New Zealand government's mutual assistance program for military aid and training to ASEAN nations. Old methods die hard in this developing country. The A4 is one of the aircraft types with which Indonesia's expanding air force is replacing aging F-86 Sabres. Local and visiting aircrew plan a combined exercise. In the briefing room, senior 75 squadron officers lecture on tactics employed in the attack combat role. Putting those theories into practice, a flight of four Skyhawks launch a simulated attack on the airfield at Ishwayudi. On a day off, the visiting airmen are the guests of their Indonesian allies on a tour of the fascinating attractions of the island of Bali. After an exotic lunch of spicy local dishes, they're entertained by traditional dancing, music and folk opera. And of course, the last minute souvenir is a must.
The next leg of 75 Squadron's five-week deployment in Southeast Asia is to be in Singapore at the Republic's Air Force Base at Tengah. The squadron takes part in a five-power integrated air defence system exercise with elements of the Malaysian, Singaporean and Australian Air Forces. The Singaporeans are not just allies, they're good friends and hosts too. Immediately they arrive and later during the deployment, it's all go for the ground servicing crew. The panels come off and they're into it. The complete aircraft is checked out quickly but carefully. Any fault, no matter how minor, is instantly rectified. The pilot's breathing oxygen is replenished. After refueling, the aircraft is operational again. And while the aircraft are engaged in their war games, the ground servicing team can relax. Final stop on 75 Squadron's scheduled itinerary in Southeast Asia is Malaysia. Below, villagers follow a traditional lifestyle in the jungle. Above, the squadron flies over an almost unbroken carpet of lush green vegetation. In the last phase of this long tropical exercise, 75 Squadron operates out of a tented camp on the perimeter of Kwantan Airfield, halfway up the east coast of the Malaysian Peninsula. In these isolated situations, Kiwi ingenuity comes to the fore. A New Zealand airman suffering from dehydration and heat exhaustion gets improvised treatment from the squadron's medics with the aid of a fresh coconut. Even the crash fire tender is put to good use after the day's flying program is over. They've had five weeks continual exercising in the hot, steamy climate of Southeast Asia. Once more, 75 Squadron heads home for Ohakia and home for more training. For only unrelenting training and the continual updating of tactical and operational doctrine can maintain the RNZAF's attack combat competence. It is competence in this role which provides the basis for all military professionalism in the air. Without it, an Air Force would lose credibility to both itself and its allies. With it, being able to react on the instant ensures that the Royal New Zealand Air Force will continue high and handsome. On the wings of that eagle I reach right up and touch the sky I've broken all the chains that bind the sea